super hot today and I'm sweating bollocks so don't mind me. <laughs> Hi guys it's Tracy welcome back to my channel so considering I'm filming this video to go up on Valentine's Day I figured I would do a video around romance um, in books or the books that I've read as well as probably my favorite couples and which ones that have played out romantic tropes really well so let's get right into it so star-crossed lovers are a really big thing I guess as part of romance novels we all know about Romeo and Juliet and how they're doomed from the beginning because the fates of their stars have I guess outlined their destiny um, but for more of a modern read the Dressmaker by Rosalie Ham has Teddy and Tilly as a couple, which I really love personally because they do the whole slow burning romance where they break down each other's barriers and get to know each other. Um, but because of Tilly's past and everything else like that, they are sort of doomed, um, unfortunately, and it is really sad to read about. But there is a movie as well, if you guys want to watch it. Um, Kate Winslet as well as Liam Hensworth is part of the movie. I definitely prefer the them as a couple in the, in the book. Because um, I definitely imagined Tilly to be a lot more younger than Kate Winslet. Like, she's gorgeous, not going to lie. But I think the age gap between Kate and Liam was really obvious in the movie to me. But I'll leave a link to my review of the movie versus the book um, down below in the description bar for you guys to read about. But I still think this was one of the best, I guess, adult um, rom relationships that I read. Then you have relationships where the couple sort of accidentally falls in love um, and then they sort of realise that they're I get enemies, I guess, are on opposite sides where they shouldn't have fallen in love with each other um, type of romance, which I really liked in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor, as well as the Winner's Curse trilogy. Oh, there we go, there we go. The Winner's Curse trilogy by Marie Rakoski. Out of the two, I definitely prefer Akiva, oh, Akiva and Karu's relationship a bit more um, just because I found that it was really passionate and intense and they had tremendous obstacles to surpass before they could really get together and even then it wasn't all happy days for them but reading about them and reading about their relationship, not just the romance part but how they got to know each other got to figure out what they could sacrifice for each other and things like that just really give, gave me butterflies and I really enjoyed reading that. Irin and Kestrel, um, they did have that sort of getting to know each other, learning about each other, um, but I liked that they really cared for each other. There is another romantic trope that plays in plays out in this series, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. I just want to say that it was done really well. Like I know sometimes that type of trope can be very overplayed, um, but it was good because it meant that we got a lot more character development, um, a lot more character realisation as well, and it showed that if you're meant to be, you're meant to be, that type of thing, so I thought that was really cute as well. And then we have that opposites attract type of thing, um, and I would give this to Mr Darcy and Liz, or Elizabeth Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. Um, I thought they were hilarious as a couple, and I liked that it was progressive, and... I know back then, like, if you had someone, like, you know, I guess a rich gentleman proposed to you things like that, like, it would be an immediate thing, but because Elizabeth Bennet stood up for herself, they sort of valued each other, respected each other on a whole nother level, and I think that's a really great message for all readers, especially girls, um, is that you need to value and respect yourself first, so that, you know, the person that you fall in love with um, values and respects you as well, not just you know, appreciates you for who you are but doesn't give you that respect that you need um, as an individual, especially because you're a female. But this, they are an amazing couple, they're hilarious to read about and I just loved the way that they got to know each other and how they fell in love with each other. This is an interesting one because I don't really know how to classify it but this is The Host by Stephanie Meyer which is a sci-fi novel but has a really large romantic aspect to it and it's a fascinating way to tell a story about a relationship or about romance that surpasses humanity you know um, it's not just romance between a boy and a girl and I just thought it was a fascinating way to explore how much humans can feel for each other and how much we have to share for each other but sometimes we just don't like sometimes we 
aren't as selfless as we should be or as caring as we should be um, especially within these day and ages so I just thought this was a really good way to sort of share that emotion that feeling of love beyond um, what we would consider love for ourselves. and I really did like the way that the relationship progressed as well and how he accepted who she was even though she wasn't technically human um, I thought that was a really great part of this this gets a bit controversial because I know that Stockholm Syndrome is a really big thing and sometimes it is overplayed in um, books, especially in YA. Um, and it does sit well in some people, it doesn't sit well in other people. Um, for this one it is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adia, which is a retelling of The Arabian Nights. And I know this sounds so bad, but it was that really, I guess, forbidden type of love, I would say, or even just really surprising, even though I knew it was going to happen. Um, but the way that it happened and the way that you sort of understand Khalid a bit more and why he's doing these things and that he really cares for people and who he really is behind the king that he is and just things like that makes it really interesting to read and you also sympathise with him and feel compassion for him as well as just that like it's that saddening feeling when you're like oh they belong together but what's going to happen you know that type of feeling and there like I was pretty much very involved in this relationship all the way through I haven't read the second book yet so we'll see how that goes but this was really intense <laughs> then I have the LGBT um I guess couple that I really love and I haven't read a lot of books that involve LGBT um characters at all but this would have to be Will Grayson and Tiny and I know this is a spoiler and I'm so sorry but their relationship is one a great way to explore I guess acceptance of your sexuality and who you really are and coming out to people but also two a way for people to see that it's not very easy um once you find someone you like to really you know settle down with them like there will always be problems especially um if you're not 100% confident in who you are if you're really conflicted with what you want in life and things like that and I think it's a great way to show that John Green and David Leverton does an amazing job with just exploring that type of relationship. There is another couple in here which I think is they're really cute but Tiny and Will Grayson are just great because they're so different from each other but that's how they draw out the positivity in each other and just the way that they care for each other even though they don't really want to show it to each other that often and I just thought that was really good. Next two books I want to show you are two couples that are my favourite probably by far since reading in general. Um, the first one is probably that trope where it's like you have your exes and then they meet again and they realise that fate is fate and they are supposed to be with each other especially if they are in some type of conflict and then they realise oh no we need to be with each other. Um, and this one goes to Ezra and Katie in the Illuminae Files, and this is the first book, Illuminae, by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. They are hilarious as a couple. Hands down one of the best couples ever to read because they're so realistic. I love that Katie is so sassy and that Ezra is hilarious and really humorous, and I can see why they bounce off each other. Um, but at the end of the day, they still care a lot for each other, and that's the m number one thing that they exude. You just root for them no matter what. Like... Like, I know that they're bound to be with each other and you're supposed to feel those ways, but I feel those ways because I know the characters and I've read it and I've understood their relationship and the development that they've had and you just feel for them and you want them to be with each other right from the get-go. And I, I just love that it's written that way and I think that's partly due to the author and how they've written the book. Um, so yeah, like Ezra and Katie takes out probably second place in my favourite couples. And then you have the classic girl meets bad boy and falls in love and it is kind of insta love but this couple takes the cake for being my favorite couple and it is Mara Dyer and Noah Shaw in the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer um, trilogy this is by Michelle Rodkin oh Hodkin sorry and I have not gotten over their relationship um, despite how young they are and despite how crazy this entire series is like their relationship still burns with an intensity with passion they both want to sacrifice themselves for each other um, but they both can't live without each other and it's just this bond that has tied them together and then I sort of was on board with their relationship all the way through and I definitely found that 
by the end of that I was holding my breath waiting to see what would happen um, if they would be together all the way to the end and you know it being invested in a relationship in a book is probably the number one reason why a lot of couples tend to succeed uh, or win over readers and these guys are my number one favorite couple so those are my thoughts on romance and books which ones worked really well um as well as my favorite couples let me know down below who your favorite couple is or otp i guess um which books you think romance is written really well in which ones you think i shouldn't be reading um otherwise i hope you enjoy valentine's day if you're celebrating it otherwise i shall see you guys soon hope you guys have a lovely day bye